So I'm going to do a little experiment here. Um, and how much vacuum is enough? Right? That's really the question. Um, 30 inches of vacuum is a perfect vacuum. right? And what the vacuum does is it pulls the air out of the pen blanks. And it, the real action of filling the pen blank doesn't occur until you release the vacuum. There's a little bit of penetration, but not a whole lot, right? So basically, you put this under vacuum until you stop seeing bubbles come out. And then when bubbles stop coming out of the pen blank, that's when you can turn the vacuum off and you let it soak. And by the soaking, the uh, voids in that pen blank are sucking the fluid in um, to fill the voids. And the rule of thumb is, however long you let it under vacuum, you let it soak for twice as long, all right? So if I have it under vacuum for three hours, I let it soak for at least six, okay? So um, the question of how much vacuum is enough? Um, 26, 27, 28, who knows, right? But um, I've never done this before, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I took a glove, and there's a little bit of air in it, right? But um, I'm gonna put it in here, and then I'm gonna put it under vacuum and then we'll see how this glove grows at the various stages of vacuum. I think at 26 or 27 inches, it's gonna probably fill this up, right, so that it's pretty, uh, pretty taut all the way across. But when you get to 28, 29, it's gonna expand exponentially as you, uh, as you go down. So let's, uh, let's see. Am I right there, Nuke? It's, it's gonna be impressive. Yeah. Well, like I said, I've never done it before, so. Um, I've seen videos online, and uh, so um, this pump should draw pretty close to 29 inches, I think. Um, we'll see. <laughs>
more than reasonable enough to be able to uh, draw air out of a pen blank. So, what do you have to do to do this? Right? Um, you have to have a chamber. And uh, I first started doing this with a pressure pot right, that I put a, um, a sleeve in, uh, like a painter's pail, right? One of those clear plastic painter's pail. Put the blanks in the uh, painter's pail, cover it with cactus juice. You have to have something to weight it down, right? Because the blanks are going to float. And you, you want them to be underneath the liquid. They have to be under the surface of the liquid. So, and then I just put that under vacuum and leave it under vacuum for a long time. I could never tell when the air stopped coming out, right? So then I, uh, I discovered the first um, style of um, this was the first that I uh, that I started using. Um, it worked good, um, but if I left resin in this, you see that the resin started reacting. This is like a polycarbonate. Um, it's not really. Uh, it reacted with the resin. That's what the, that's what the fogginess and uh, the roughness on the inside of this is, right? So I decided to go with a bigger and uh, you know different type of material, um, and that's what I went with the uh, this clear PVC. Um, the resin, all right? The resin comes if you buy. I think it's a half a gallon or less. It comes pre-catalyzed. It's a cat. It's a catalyzed resin. All right. Um, so I buy mine in the gallon form. I take and uh, um, I'll divide it up, and uh, uh, I'll catalyze it, then divide it up, and then dye it. Right. Um, you can see how dark this is. That looks black. That's the blue that I use to uh, uh, to dye these blanks. Um, what do you use to dye with? Well, the dye of choice is actually a lumilite dye. Um, the molecular structure of it is so small that it penetrates pretty easy. How much do you use? Put in until you think there's enough. Add the same amount again. And then add the same amount again. Right? Um, what you don't want to do is take this red and not add enough because then you're going to get a pink pen blank, right? Um, you saw the color of the blue, right? Um, when that's actually turned down and then C8 over, it's pretty dark. Um, it's uh, it, it's good penetration, and you can see. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find a good example. You can see the difference in the dye levels, right? This is the blue that I used. Um, I probably used about a third of the container um, in the amount of resin that I uh, that I used there. So, like I said, put it in till it almost looks black. Put in the same amount and then do it a third time because uh, um, the darker the uh, the resin, um, the better color uh, penetration you're going to get throughout the blank. All right. This stuff does have a shelf life, <coughs> so they say, but I can tell you that I've had this for about, oh, I'd say a year and a half, uh, maybe two years, maybe more. Um, but I will tell you that um, Curtis is a great guy to work with. If, uh, um, if you have your resin and it's been catalyzed for a long time and you find out that it's not working right, you get in touch with him, he'll sell you more catalyst and um, he'll ship it to you and you can put it in and it works just like new again. I did this once with this already. So, so um, I've read somewhere now, you can answer yes or no. You can use that stuff over and over again until it's gone, is that correct? Oh yeah, absolutely. This is this is cat this has um, dyed pen planks already. This was full when I started and there's what, uh, 5, 8, 10, 11, 12 blanks come out of that. So what, when um, you're done in the vacuum chamber, you just pour it back in? Just and absolutely, pour it right back in the pour it right back in the container it came out of. So it's all reusable. Do you cheesecloth it? 
No. Mm. I don't. I, I don't know that anybody does. So I'm just going to pour this resin in here because this is catalyzed. What do you say catalyzed with? What's that? What do you catalyze it with? Uh, it's whatever, whatever the catal. I mean, he sends a catalyst with it. Um, I really don't know what it is, um, but uh, it. Uh, um, it's, it's, like a, it's like a um, a milky uh, powdery substance, and what you do is you open the bottle, you pour a little bit of resin in it, mix it up because it's by weight, and he puts the right weight in that little bottle that he sends you, and you you mix it up a little bit, and then you pour it right back in here, and then mix this. Okay, so it's kind of like PR where it's the A is this big. And oh yeah, the a is uh, it's 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 small. Okay. It, it's it's small. Uh, by gram weight. Um, out of those blanks, after they're stabilized, do they turn like wood or do they turn like acrylic? Or somewhere in between? Both. It's kind of somewhere in between. Um, when you turn these, um, you don't have two centers, do you? To put one of these between centers? When you turn it, it, it comes off almost like a sawdust. It's a very fine particle. You don't get ribbons. Um, and it's not like wood, so it's kind of an in-between, right? It, uh, but they polish up great, and you sometimes don't even have to put a finish on it because it's already a plastic. They kind of, they kind of polish like a big Correct. Correct. Big okay. Correct. Yeah. They polish up really nice. Yeah, um, and so <clears throat> the, the, just the un, undyed cactus juice is just going to make the wood Natural, natural color, or maybe a bit darker. Correct. Um, like I said, these came out of the same. These came out of the same tree, right? The same, the same log. Right. But you can see how much darker this is. Right. This is just like what your pen blank does when you put CA. On. You get that deeper um, grain look to it. Um, and the outside of it looks horrible because you know you've got that resin that came out through the cooking process, right? And it hardened once you got outside of it. But this is the inside. This is this is straight cut. This is no polish on it. Um, but you can see how well that, that looks right there. Right? So, um, like I said, it, it darkens up when you actually put a CA finish on it. So, um, so you put this under vacuum for, and you'll see when I actually apply vacuum to it, it's going to foam like mad. And then we'll sit here and watch it for a little bit, and I'll put it in the corner and let it do its thing. Pull it out. Is there a certain time limit you have to get it into the oven? No. Um, you can just let it soak, pop it, wrap it, and if you forget about it, you can put it in the oven. Uh, you probably don't want to do that because over time that resin is going to soak out. Yeah. Right? Um, so it's not like a it's not like PR or like aluminum light when you're casting. You've got a certain amount of time before it hardens. It's not going to harden until you cook it, right? But you don't want to wait days. Leave it under leave it under the liquid if you're going to wait days, right? That hurts nothing. All you're doing is allowing more to get in.